What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Tar Heel Illustrated podcast brought to you by Tar Heel Illustrated. Dot com. I'm THI staff writer Jacob Turner joining me as he always does right there on the screen our very own publisher Andrew Jones and AJ we're here for another UNC basketball transfer portal related podcast we're going to be talking about should Hubert finalize his roster sooner rather than later and I'll talk about why it is a topic of discussion here in a second but before we dive into it AJ real quickly this podcast is brought to you by my perfect franchise dot Net. So you're looking to leave the corporate race, looking to start a side hustle, just looking to start a new career. You can do that with my favorite franchise.net. We'll talk about it a little more in depth a little bit later on the podcast. Stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, you can check them out at myperfectfranchise.net if you want to maybe go peep the website while you listen to us in the background. Go ahead and do that. But again, we'll be talking about it a little bit later on. But a big thank you to my perfect franchise for continuing to sponsor our podcast. So AJ, let me paint the picture for people right now. Okay. Let me, let me, let me, yeah. let me get the scenario up so people understand what we're going to be talking about here. Portal closes on May 11th. So can players cannot enter the portal starting on May 11th. So we're just under a month away from that. Obviously as of right now, in the recording of this podcast, Carolina has picked up two guys in the portal and Paxson Wojcik and Jalen Withers. We do expect some more to come. And maybe by the time this podcast comes out, those guys will have been announced. So we'll leave that one up to, to see what happens. But the question and topic we're going to be hitting on here, AJ, is not really a debate, but we're going to be looking at it from both perspectives because there's a perspective of, okay, maybe Hubert should finalize his roster sooner rather than later to get his guys in, get them bedded into the program and start kind of working on building the team camaraderie and, and, and the roster and his rotation going into the start of summer practice, which will obviously have a few of those throughout the summer as well. Or does he wait to finalize his roster? Does he wait to see who in, enters the portal by May 11th? Maybe there's a couple other guys we've seen over the last couple of days, a couple of big ACC players enter the portal. Maybe yeah. it's worth waiting a little bit to <clears throat> see if somebody else comes in that you want even more. So I guess I'll just, just start. Let, let's, let's break it down in two separate ways. Let's talk about some of the pros in, in finalizing the roster now, sooner rather than later first. Let's focus on that because I do think there's a lot of positives with that as well. So what are some positives and maybe some advantages of him, Hubert, finalizing his roster sooner rather than later instead of waiting till you know, maybe after May 11th to do so? Yeah, and a couple of those ACC guys that I think you're referring to, Jesse Edwards from Syracuse, which is just mind-blowing. Matthew Cleveland from Florida State. You can see that one coming. Both... That's a big guy. In the no, I mean, but yeah, so Cleveland enters a month after Florida State plays its last game. So I think it was Florida yeah, State's that, leading that, scorer last year, too, if I remember. Yeah, that. so really good play. It, it, I think that's one reason. The one reason the portal's open is because guys just take their time. And then sometimes guys react to what their teams do in the portal, which could happen at North Carolina. We don't 100%, know. 100%. 100%. So that's one of the reasons why it's open as long as it is. So I understand that it, it kind of sucks for us because we have to stay tuned into for it so for long. three months. Yeah. <laughs> which is one reason I hope North Carolina goes ahead and gets all of its guys and they're done with it here before I go to Jackson. <laughs> not Beach not, not a selfish days. reason at all. Is it? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Before I go off to Jacksonville beach and Tahiti and, and <laughs> Guam and I'm anyway, I'm not doing those things. I'm just kind of making a point. I'd like to be a human being for a, at some point. Busy. Yeah. For, for an hour a day at least. So, uh, so why get, why do it now? Yeah. Um, you know what you want. There's so many players in the portal right now. Record that, number, yeah. And there's so many really good players that if you're ho if you're holding out for the perfect guy, you may end up losing out on a lot of other guys that can help you. So I, I don't think this is a deal where you should think, well, what if this guy gets in or who else may enter? I think you have to look at what's there and take what fits your program. Now, some people were critical of them getting Jalen Withers. Like, well, he's on a four in 2014, which doesn't mean anything to me. And, and well, he's not super, he's not a super uh, high score. He's not a prolific score. He's not a, a, a super quick slasher. They, they look for reasons why he wasn't a good pickup instead of understanding that maybe this guy fits. Cause I think the number, well, maybe the number one problem with last year's team was it didn't fit each other. Like yeah. there just was no cohesion out there. There were a lot of other issues, but that's probably right there at or near the top of the list. So you want to get a group that fits. And part of the fitting 
is look well so before i get to that part so if a guy comes along like pax and logic early on and hubert's like i need that guy that's what i want so go take him you don't wait till the end of the high school recruiting period cycle to, to get your guys there obviously you know who's out there but still you don't wait so don't wait here because I just think that if a guy waits for a long time, he's really, really good to leave the portal. There's some other stuff going on there. Yeah. And you probably sure. don't want to have to deal with that. For sure. So get your guys in place, finalize that roster, because then it will give the other dudes in your team time to make their decisions. Mm -hmm. So I think it's fair to them. But also in the case of North Carolina, where you're going to bring in quite a few new guys, get everyone there in May. When the first summer school session of, uh, uh, begins in May, you want your whole roster there and you want them working together and building chemistry. It's not one guy who has to mesh with the rest of the team like Pete. It's a lot of guys. It's a lot of different personalities. It's a lot of guys coming in with different college experiences. Men, you know, Jalen Withers is going to be 23 in December. Pax of Wojcik is going to be 23 at some point during the season. And whoever else they bring in is going to be probably 21, 22 years old, more than likely. So these are, these are strong personalities. These are guys who have had established college experiences. They don't have to acclimate in the way that a freshman has to acclimate. They have to get along. They have to play ball. They have to train and they have to establish uh, a sort of a hierarchy in the program in terms of leadership. Armando can't talk maybe to Jalen Withers the way he was able to talk to Tyler Nickel because mm. he, because he has a different level of seniority. So they need to get all those things worked out. And so the sooner this group gets in there, the sooner that they start to build all that. So when they have their practices in July, a lot of that stuff's gotten out of the way. Let's remember last year, Pete Nance didn't commit until June 18th. So by the time they had their practices in July, they don't, he'd only been with them for a few weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, Garcia, a couple of years ago, Dawson Garcia, he committed after the July practices and it never Please, worked. Man. And I'm not, yeah. not going to say just because it didn't work there means it never works. It can obviously, but I just think moving forward, the best thing for this program is to get the roster done. I said in the pod three weeks ago, they need to get this thing done in a month or so. And I still think there's a chance in the next week or two this thing, they, Carolina could be finished with the portal. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I have a strong sense that I'm not projecting it. I have a strong sense that's going to be the case because yeah. I think that they know who they want that's out there. They've identified what their needs are and they're just working through the process and making that happen. So um, there is a plus on the other side. We can hit on that in a second, yeah, but, that that's, a second yeah. but that's why I think you do it when you know the right guy's there, take him when he's there and move on. Yeah, agreed. You know what you're looking for. You can vet them out. And, and again, I think let's not forget about the, you know, f the, the, the highly talked about and famed, you know, uh, pickup games that Carolina has during the summer. If you can get a guy in, they can participate in that. If you're bringing a guy in on July 20th, he's missed half of those, you know, practices and in off season things that can be invaluable. So some of these players getting to go up against NBA guys, former really good players in North Carolina, there's nothing quite like some of that experience you can pick up. If you take advantage of it, I know some comments were made from some former Carolina players on a podcast about a, a few weeks ago about certain guys, maybe on last year's team, not taking it as serious as they should, but if you can take advantage of, of some of those pickup games, get them in early and, 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 and participate in some of those, it's invaluable experience and also individual workouts throughout the all season. If you're bringing a guy in on July 12th, well, there's months that have gone by, not only to work on it, to come in and, and practice with the team during some of their limited summer practices, but you're also, you're not exactly sure because the, you're just getting recruited in July of, of what it is. If you can come in in May, Hubert coaching staff and say, Hey, these are the three, four things I need you to work on during the off season to develop your game. This is the idea of how I see you fitting into our roster and our scheme of what I'm trying to do next year. Now, all of a sudden you've got three, four months of individual along with some team practices that you'll have in some pickup games to work on your game and develop that. That to me is invaluable. Instead of coming in in July, head spinning a little bit, you've missed some of those pickups. You've missed some of those individual workouts. Obviously you've been doing it, but maybe you're not working on some of the aspects of your game that you would have worked on if you knew exactly what your role was three months before going into the season. So 
I do think there are a lot of pluses coming in earlier because I think at time is a huge thing. And you hit the nail on the head, AJ. The number one thing for me is, is you're not just bringing one guy in. You're bringing in a lot of different guys. You're also bringing in a freshman class as well. You need this team to gel. You need this team to know yeah. what this team's going to be sooner rather than later, in my opinion. So I do think there are probably a little bit more positives to finalizing your roster now instead of waiting a couple months to do so. But there are some positives oh. in, in that, which we'll hit on in a second. Yeah, I want to hit on the freshman thing, too, because I was thinking about they already have one freshman guard coming in, Simeon Wilcher. So he's going to need to learn how to play with everybody. They're going to need to learn yeah. how to play with him. And they very well may bring in their starting point guard. As of the time we're recording this, that has not been made public yet. So if they're bringing in a dish first, dish second, dish third kind of Coda-esque, uh, Marshall-esque kind of point guard, he needs to get on the floor and play with these guys. So he needs to play with them. And, and uh, when they're playing the former players, he needs to just work with them, run drills with them. All that stuff needs to happen. And the more these guys can sort a lot of the playing rotation out themselves by playing together and seeing who fits the most together, then I think that Hubert's job will be a little bit easier. They have a very tough non-ACC schedule. So they need to be ready to go when November 6th hits. They need to be yeah. ready to roll because they could either they could kill their NCA hopes in some senses those first two months, or they could thoroughly enhance it. Yeah. You know, last year, everyone kept waiting, you know, hanging by a thread on Ohio State, watching them slowly drop out of the top fifty, and Carolina lost that quad one win. And then people were hoping Michigan would push up there. You want to be so ready, have the right talent, the right composition, the right direction, the right scheme the right approach and the right chemistry to get right into the schedule and win those games. So your fan base isn't sweating out an Ohio state Maryland game on a Thursday night on February 25th. You don't want yeah, that. Sure, if they're that's in that situation true. again, then there are a lot of problems. Yeah. So get in there and get that stuff done. That's the kind of, I, I think the people who subscribe to that theory, I kind of subscribe to it myself, but there is another approach. Yeah. Oh, de definitely. I, I do think it's better to be proactive than reactive in the portal. But flipping over the other side, I think there are other positives to to look at and, and waiting until May 11th when everybody's entered the portal. Nobody else can enter it. OK, now maybe you have a few more players that on April 15th, you didn't know we're going to enter the portal. Now they enter the portal and you're like, oh, I, I like that guy over the guy I was recruiting a month ago, a heck of a lot better for what I'm trying to do. So when you look at waiting, talk to me about, in your opinion, some of the positives in doing so, and then I'll offer mine afterwards. Well, because then you know everybody that's in the portal that hasn't found a school. Yeah. So you can go, like you have a draft board, right? You go to the top and just roll on down. See mm -hmm. see who you want, see who fits, see who's interested in you, and go from there. So if you're looking for um, a building, maybe the best possible roster that you can, that might be a way of doing it. However, keep in mind, all of the guys that had entered the portal that found schools would no longer be on that draft board. Yeah. So it's you're, risky you're, in a way too, because you might lose some guys you really like. Yeah. The other thing is Hubert's already started building his roster. Mm -hmm. So he, he brought in Wojcik, he brought in Weathers. Someone else may be in by the time we uh, run this podcast. Wink, wink. And then somebody enters the portal on May 9th and Hubert's like, holy crap, I got to get that guy. But it doesn't mesh with what he's already brought in. You can't turn and tell a logic, hey, you better go back in the portal now. Mm -hmm. So if you have in your mind, and this is why I'm going to go back to the first thing, I th which I think is a better approach. If you have in your mind, this is what I want my team to look like. Don't deviate because some shiny object entered the portal in the last week. You know what you want. There are dudes out there everywhere. There are so many guys out there that can make North Carolina a better team. Still, find one of them that fits, make it work. Yeah. I just think that there's too much risk in waiting to May 11th. I, I think this team needs as many new bodies over there as possible. They need to start fresh in many ways, and they're doing so with Armando and RJ. And then everyone else brought in by Hubert, and it gives them an opportunity to really become Hubert Davis's team and program more than the first two were. And then we get to learn everything we need to about Hubert as a coach, which we will in year three. So I just think that that being proactive and if a guy comes along and you just love him and you want him and you're like, yeah, this is, we need this guy. 
even if maybe a slightly more talented version of him pops in a couple of weeks, you know, open enters the portal in a couple of weeks, take the one that's there. Yeah. I do think there's a risk in way. Like I said, I do think like you mentioned, there are, there are some positives because you, you might get, I, I think you could get lucky. And I think lucky is a good word to use because you could get lucky in waiting and maybe you get somebody in the portal. Like I said, that, that enters on May 10th, you had no idea and didn't expect, but you're like, Oh, that's my guy. That guy really fits the system that we want to run. That could be a positive, but there's also a risk that comes with that of a, you're going to pass up on guys that you might really like saying, well, you know, I really like these two guys, but I'm going to wait and, and, and be more reactive and because I'm just hoping that somebody else that's just maybe 10% better enters the portal that may not happen. I think the other risk with doing that too, AJ, is, y- you know, you're just playing the waiting game again. And I think you need to get these guys in early. I really do. I think when you're reshaping a roster as much as Hubert is, I think not only with that, when you look at the year Carolina's coming off, the pressure of next year's team on Hubert Davis to perform and, and, and finish with a good record, make the NCAA tournament, more importantly, is going to be even higher. And if you're still trying to finalize a roster in July – that can get a little bit sketchier and put a little bit more pressure on you to bring a team in and, and try to gel a team together. Because I do think that's going to be super, super important for next year's team going into it. Cause like you mentioned that non-conference schedule, which we hit on in another podcast is no joke. You can't just, no. you're not just playing a bunch of um, CAA teams in the, in the non-conference. No, no, you no, just no, kind no. of build a team. You've got to be ready to go. And there's going to be a lot of traveling, a lot of big yeah. time opponents, a, a lot of big time games against a lot of big time opponents finalizing that roster early on. I think gives you a, a little bit more of a, a va- advantage in that respect too. And, and like you said too, AJ, let's say you wait till May 11th. Well, what if there's a couple guys on your roster right now that we're kind of waiting to see who you pick up on the portal to make their decision. And then you wait till after the portal's closed and you bring in a couple guys and maybe now you've got a couple guys on your roster that don't really want to be there anymore because of who you brought in. I think you run that risk a little bit as well. That's a good too. point. That's a good and, point. I, I think they also, this might be unfair, but we don't have a lot of intel to go by because this portal, as we know it, isn't very old. But they waited out a guy last year, and he did, and ultimately he didn't fit. Yeah, he didn't. No. And then no, he didn't. they they were interested in a guy two years ago, but he sort of fell into their lap late in the process, and that didn't work at all. I think that was a bit of luck involved with that, yeah. But it, again, it didn't work out. I think he was a good addition at the time, but ultimately it, it yeah, didn't work out but, like they thought it could. Yeah, and you know, they kind of recruited over a guy they just brought in at that spot. Yeah, exactly. And and that guy didn't really blossom until the previous one just said, "What the hell, I'm gone." Mm-hmm. In the middle of the season, so they have a they have examples, although not many, that where hey, this didn't work. So let's try it this way. You know, when they got Brady, they talked to Hubert talked to Brady on a Monday, and by Friday, without ever meeting in person, just a couple of Zoom chats, Brady was in. Mm-hmm. I want to be there. There's something you just said. You don't want guys in your program that don't want to be there. Yeah, that's so. Yeah, that's the huge. guys that are that want to come now, they want to be there. Take them. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah they I think we're, I think, we're, I think we're on the same. I think we both agree with this. Yeah, I think I think I don't want to say it's a no brainer because I do see positives from other sides, but I think you have to look at the situation Carolina finds itself in right now and also look ahead, like we've mentioned a couple of times in here, to who they're just how difficult their schedule is going to be early on. I, I just I don't see a lot of advantages in just waiting, especially when there's already a record number of kids in the portal. You made a good point earlier of like, well, if a guy's in the portal on May 10th, I mean, he's had two months to make a decision. Why is he making a decision now? Is he, do you really want that guy coming into your program? I, I think sometimes it'll work out just fine, but a lot of times you you're also maybe a guy not entering the portal for the right reasons. Maybe something happened. That, and again, I think it's better to be proactive in this portal when there's so many good kids out there already than reactive because reactive to me is just a lot riskier. You just don't know what you're going to get. You don't know who's going to have already committed to schools. And maybe you had a list of five guys that all fit your system, but you waited till May 11th to see what happens. And now maybe instead of a list of five that are still out there, you've got like a list of two now, and maybe they're not your top guys that you could have gotten. Yeah, exactly. And you do run the risk too, AJ. Let's say you wait till May 12th, May 11th, and you recruit some guys after. Well, you know, what if the guys that you're recruiting don't come don't to want your, to go don't come to North Carolina? Or you they get I mean? offered money other, uh, somewhere else, and uh, that they, they lost a guy They lost a guy last year that kind of led them to wait for Pete Nance, who wanted X number of dollars. 
half mm-hmm. up front and half later. And Carolina said, no, he went to another school, had basically the same kind of season there he had had at his previous school and um, probably would have been better off with him on the court, but not for the demands he was making. So yeah, yeah you're hundred percent right. If they want to be there and their hands not out and they can make you a better team, I think they've already gotten better. Mm-hmm. And they could do oh, even do more so. so. So, yeah, we're 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 uh, we're locked in on this one. Yeah, we're on the same page. And again, guys, if you are a TarHillIllustrated.com subscriber, which you can be for eight thirty three a month, um, go on our message boards. We'll post this on our premium message boards every time we post an article or podcast on our website. We post it on the boards. Get involved. Let us know what you think. A A, do you think Carolina should finalize it sooner rather than later? Or B, do you think Carolina should wait? We can have a little discussion on there because I do think it's a very interesting topic or just mention us on Twitter, but links below at heel illustrated. Let us know what you guys think. We love to interact with y'all love to hear from y'all. It's not just about us getting on here and offering what we think. I think again, like I've said, I think there's pros and cons to each situation. Let us know what you think is the best move and, and we'll have a little, you know, positive discourse about it. It's always fun to do that as well. Um, AJ real quickly, cause we're almost done with this podcast. Got to shout out um, my perfect franchise.net one more time. So I mentioned it earlier, but it's simple. If you're in the corporate world looking to maybe start a business on the side, make a little extra cash. Maybe you're in the corporate world just looking to get out of it and start a new career path. Maybe you're fresh out of school and and you're just trying to figure out what you want to do and you want to be your own boss, have unlimited PTO, be able to create your own income, wealth, and schedule. You can do that with MyPerfectFranchise.net. Andy Ludicky is the founder and owner. And what he does is he helps you throughout the entire process of opening a franchise, not only just a franchise that you may want to open, but the franchise that can fit you the best for your lifestyle, what your goals are with it, and what your current work situation is, whether you're, again, have a limited free time to be able to do something because you want to start a new career or just looking to do a little bit on the side. He can match that all together for you, and he's going to walk you through the process the entire way. And AJ, he doesn't make money unless you make money. I think that's the biggest thing about it. It's a 100% free consultation process. Been a rival subscriber for over 22 years. Massive Mac Brown fan and just an all-around really, really great guy. So if you're looking to do something a little different, become your own boss. You can do it through Andy, my favorite franchise.net. He's done the exact same thing from the bottom that you would be doing with him years ago. And he's worked his way up to be able to do this and help others now. So he knows exactly what you have to go through and yep. he's going to help you every step of the way. So I got two podcasts linked below that AJ did with Andy as well, as well as a link to his website, go watch those. You can learn a little bit more about Andy, see the type of guy he is. He's a fantastic guy. We're, we're, we're thrilled to continue to, to that. He's continuing to sponsor our podcast. Check him out. My perfect franchise.net. Take c- control of your own life. Take control of your own career. Get started right now. You can even sign up for an appointment on his website and, and he'll reach out to you through that. So again, check him out. Yeah. My perfect franchise. Dot net AJ, I think it's a good time for us to run, man. Enjoy talking a little okay. Carolina basketball with you on the transfer portal. I've been Jacob Turner. He's been Andrew Jones. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell as well, because we upload a ton throughout the you know throughout the whole year. I was going to say during the off season yeah. and throughout. The we season, got a man. lot coming. Ooh, that we got a lot, lot coming May, June, season, July. We well, not even just on the YouTube channel, on doing. the website, some other things oh, we've yeah. got going on. We're making we're yeah, making some changes, so we're, yeah, we're going to be very very active here in the off season. Yeah. Stay tuned guys. You're not going to want to miss what we're going to be doing throughout the rest of the off season going in to next year. Appreciate y'all watching. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Thanks.